On a long-term spaceflight mission to Mars, astronauts will be continuously exposed to low-dose radiation in deep space. As we purported and predicted over a year and a half ago, no one is making it to Mars without serious effects, even death, before they even get there. Now, a new study found that this exposure can cause impairments in the brains of mice, resulting in learning and memory issues, as well as anxiety. Now, the study was published Monday in the Journal of eNeuro. It was received as early as March of 2019 and peer-reviewed new concerns for neurocognitive function during deep space exposures to chronic low-dose rate neutron radiation. Now, previous studies looking at the effects of radiation on the brain have used shorter rates of exposure but higher doses of radiation, which the researchers of the new study say inaccurately reflects deep space conditions. Now, we're concerned here at Magnetic Reversal News because it also reflects magnetic reversal conditions. Now, the study now shows that radiation delivered at space-relevant dose rates over extended times elicits adverse neurocognitive effects, similar to our past studies using dose rates 400 times higher. These are much lower rates. In the new study, male mice were exposed to chronic low-dose radiation for six months. After six months had passed, the researchers found that signaling in the prefrontal cortex and hippocampus was impaired by the radiation. This created impairments in both memory and learning for the mice. The researchers also observed behaviors indicating anxiety in the mice, which led them to believe that the radiation also affected the amygdala. Now, the study now shows that radiation delivered at space-relevant doses, even magnetic reversal doses, dare I say, over extended time elicits adverse neurocognitive effects similar to the past studies using doses at a shorter rate for almost 400 times. Now this is coming from Charles Limanoli, study author and professor of radiation oncology at the University of California, Irvine. So let's not worry so much about going to Mars and the effects of the brain on those going to Mars because the headlines are a mission to Mars could cause learning impairment and anxiety but let's come back to Earth our magnetosphere our magnetopause it's collapsing it's waning the magnetic poles are reversing we're either in an excursion or a reversal it doesn't matter which one we're going down, folks. Here you can see the flexure point in 1700 and the axial dipole strength reducing by over 30%. And, and, and since 1900, just look at it dropping off the cliff here. Total magnetic field at Woods Hole over the last century. We had a little plateau here, but we've increased straight down over the last few decades. We'll, we'll get to that. And, and as the magnetosphere wanes, this allows more radionucleotides to rain down on us. Radioactive particles. Cosmic ray monitoring shows an increase in cosmic rays of 15% over the last three years. Now, new concerns for neurocognitive function during deep space exposures to chronic low-dose rate neutron radiation is going to be the same here at the surface. At some point, 
in the coming decades. As the magnetosphere wanes, the cosmic rays will increase, and this low-dose rate of neutron radiation will be equivalent to this study, unfortunately. What I do have for you is the entire paper here in a PDF. The entire study for your perusal with all the links. It's 53 pages, and it's my gift to you and to knowledge. Now, Earth's magnetic poles could start to flip. They are. What happens then? Well, right now we have a huge anomaly here. And there's lots of disinformation, so let's cover some facts. It doesn't matter if a polarity reversal or a magnetic excursion is happening. During either of those events, the magnetosphere wanes to below 20%, which will cascade radioactive particles onto the surface of the Earth, just like a trip to Mars, maybe even greater. Now, for a polarity reversal to occur, the magnetic field needs to weaken 90%, 95% in some cases. I have the data, and I will show it to you. It's called the threshold level. This process can take what was once thought thousands of years and now known to be just hundreds. And during this time, the lack of a protective magnetic shield around our planet allows cosmic rays and radionucleotides to rain down on your head. High energy particles from elsewhere in the universe also travel right through your body. When this happens, cosmic rays collide with more and more atoms in our atmosphere, such as nitrogen and oxygen, producing variants of elements called cosmogenic isotopes, like beryllium-10, carbon-14, and they fall to the surface. And by studying the quantities of these cores, paleoclimatologists like me and others can see the effects of these polarity reversals and when they took place. Now, the last polarity reversal occurred between 772,000 and 774,000 years ago. And since then, the field has almost reversed in a magnetic excursion at least 15 times. Dropping in strength significantly, but not necessarily reaching the threshold. And new studies show how rapidly Earth's magnetic field is changing. In as little as your lifetime, 80 years, we can have one of these excursions occur. As early as 2014, we knew this. Here's the facts. This is uh, the article. Yeah. And I'm about to show you some of the data sets. To blow your mind and to share with your friends. To not be scared, but be prepared for what's about to happen. The Mono Lake, the Landchamp, the Blake, the Pringle Falls. We're going to see how amazing the Pringle Falls excursion was. Now, our Earth's magnetic dipole has been dropping quite substantially and has been increasing every decade. But let's look at some of the geologic data. You're looking at the last 800,000 years. Here is the last polarity reversal right here, this very steep line here, the Brunus Matayama. And since then, the dipole, the magnetic field of Earth, has fluctuated quite erratically, continuously, which affects climate in drastic fashion and drives the ice ages here, 200,000. Major glaciation here, major glaciation here, major glaciation here, extreme glaciation here, major glaciation here, and a quick end to it as sea level rises 400 feet all due to the magnetic dipole on Earth and the field strength because they are synonymous. As it flips these lines, take a look at the Pringle Falls line here. The dipole switches at such a great rate. The climate on Earth catastrophically flips. Not only that, radionucleotides and cosmic particles rain down on your head. Evolution occurs 
at all of these flexure points. Evolution, new species, new species, new species, new species, new species, all corroborated in the paleontological record, I assure you. And they occur every 12,000 years in the last several flips or excursions. So we're living one right now. We know it because we're, we're looking at the field strength. And since 1904, the North Pole has been racing across towards Siberia. And you can see from 2000 to 2020 how far it has moved. Let's just blow this up. I'm trying. So if we just extrapolate the data, extrapolate. Let's not postulate or regurgitate. Let's emancipate and extrapolate. If we've gone from 2001 to 2020 here, by 2040, we're almost... I can't even go through the top here. We're into Siberia, rushing towards the equator by 2040. Cosmic rays are increasing already 15% over three years. It's going to continue to increase. as the magnetic excursion or reversal increases. And there are new concerns for neurocognitive function, diminution during these reversals. Those are the facts. Share it with your loved ones. It's my hope that we will be able to mitigate the diminution of neurocognitive function. It may be 5G hats, who knows? Maybe we'll develop a baseball hat that you can actually wear. Maybe it's being inside or underground. Solutions will be coming in the future. But the facts are in. Be safe, everyone.